The Sweeper has taken over baseball over the last few seasons, so much so that Baseball Savant has actually created a new pitch category to address how many pitchers are throwing this pitch. In this video, we're gonna do a brief recap of what the Sweeper is and why it has become so popular, but we're primarily here to dig into what the best two pitch combination is in baseball over the last few years and how it relates to Ray starters Drew Rasmussen and Jeffrey Springs. Let's get it going. Let's start with the sweeper. Organizations in baseball have gotten a very good understanding of how the seams of a baseball interact with the air around the ball as it moves towards the plate. And the sweeper, the sweeping slider, is a byproduct of that. There's a particular grip that is used. It's known as the two-seam sweeper grip. And it allows the pitcher to effectively cue curveball to think curveball out of hand and lets the seams of the baseball do the work in adding a bit of lift and also allowing the pitch to kind of take off laterally across the zone. The result is a pitch that's usually in the low 80s, sometimes in the mid to 80s and in upper 80s that has usually about 10 inches or more of that lateral sweep. And it's a really effective offering at generating swing and miss versus same handed hitter. So if you're a right handed pitcher thrown to a right handed hitter or a left handed pitcher thrown to a left handed hitter. And it's become popular because it basically allows pitchers who maybe struggle generating swing and miss or creating that lateral slider, but can throw a curveball to do so, to have now a swing and miss weapon. Now there's more to this sweeper story, so to speak. And it has to do with what pitch is being paired with the sweeper in a given repertoire. I initially thought when the sweeper wave took over that this was kind of replacing old sliders, but as I've talked to other people in baseball, I've started to understand that it's almost supplementing a repertoire. For example, say a pitcher has a slider already and it sits somewhere around here on what we call a short form movement plot. It has some backspin. It also has a little bit of lateral movement. Maybe it's 84 to 86 miles per hour. It's kind of between a true cutter and what we normally would think of as a slider. And then the organization teaches that pitcher a sweeping slider or the sweeper. What we're seeing happen, and I think it's deliberate, is that older slider morphs into more of what you'd call a gyro slider. And what do I mean by morph? Basically that old slider just loses a little bit of backspin. Or to put it another way, it's adding depth. It's dropping a little bit more. And that, in my opinion, is the key difference between, say, a gyro slider and what we might normally refer to as a cutter. It's subtle, and I may even be getting too in the weeds here, but a cutter, in my opinion, is a pitch that has more backspin, and it generally works more as a weak contact inducer, whereas this gyro slider is a pitch that can induce swing and miss because of its drop in depth. And it's being paired with another pitch, the sweeper, which is once again a pitch that generates swing and miss. So why? Why are teams adding these two pitches into a pitcher's repertoire, effectively throwing a gyro slider with a sweeper? I kind of just alluded to it, actually. I think this combination of two pitches is the most predictive at generating swing and miss as a pitch pair in Major League Baseball over the last few seasons. And I anecdotally had this told to me by a Major League coach, and I thought that was pretty good evidence, right? But I dug a little bit deeper, pulled some strings, and, and now I have some data on pitch pairs at the Major League level over the last few years, and we can kind of prove this out. The question is basically what combination of two pitches back to back have the highest historic probability of generating a swing and miss on that second pitch. And the results are striking. The top two pitch pairs in baseball, given a reasonable sample of times thrown between these pitch pairs, are gyro sliders and sweepers. At number one, we see the sweeper followed by a bullet slider generates a swing and miss on the second pitch, which would be a bullet slider in this case, about 38% of the time. At number two here, you see a bullet slider followed by a sweeper generates swing and a miss on the second pitch, which in this case would be a sweeper, again, about 38% of the time. So that means for every swing induced on that second pitch, whether it be a bullet slider or a sweeper, 38% of the time, you'll see a swing and miss. And then not too far below that are a sweeper followed by a sweeper and a bullet slider followed by a bullet slider. When I did some pretty basic searching of who in baseball is throwing this combination of pitches, I stumbled on a few names, one of which was Shohei Otani, which is really unsurprising given how dominant he is as a pitcher. The other one that kind of jumped out to me was Drew Rasmussen of the Rays, who pitched in the Brewers organization, eventually came over to the Rays and kind of changed his repertoire a bit. And I didn't think too much about Rasmussen until I saw this tweet from Alex Fast of Pitcher List calling out that another Rays starter, Jeffrey Springs, started throwing a sweeper. And when you look at what his old slider became, it all kind of clicked for me. Springs' old slider was exactly this kind of in-between slider in 2022 that we talked about earlier. And now, in a really small sample, 
We can see that Springs is throwing a big sweeper that looks like it'll be around 80 to 81 miles per hour, somewhere between maybe 13 to 17 inches of that lateral break, along with a slightly tweaked old slider, which now fits perfectly into our gyro slider category. It's below, say, a bucket of maybe five inches of vertical movement and five inches of horizontal movement threshold around 85 miles per hour. This kind of changes based on the velocity of the pitch and the shape, but I do think you'd categorize this as a bullet slider more than you would categorize it as a cutter. And the Rays did the same thing with Drew Rasmussen entering 2022. Rasmussen was throwing this hard downer slider kind of in the gyro territory, but it kind of had some topspin to it such that it had even more depth, so not fully in the gyro territory. And then in 2022, he started throwing a true sweeper that is 12 inches of horizontal movement, pretty hard, harder than springs at 84 to 85 miles per hour. And again, this gyro is slider right in our window of below five inches of vertical and less than five inches of horizontal at a pretty hard velocity, 90 miles per hour. So what does this mean for baseball as a whole? I think my prediction is really just that we're gonna see this combination more. We're already seeing more sweepers in Major League Baseball. And I think what we're gonna start seeing is guys also supplementing it with a gyro slider. So not having as much backspin as your general cutter that generally is used to induce weak contact, but more so a pitch that has some drop and that can also generate swing and miss. And are there a lot of variables to throw into this equation that could complicate things? Yes, primarily that you have to look at whether the sweeper even fits in a pitcher's arsenal. You have to look at whether he can throw a gyro slider at a velocity, which is going to be above 85 miles per hour, which is actually an effective pitch as opposed to something that's going to get destroyed in his repertoire. Can he command the pitch? How is he comfortable with the pitch? Are the mechanics of the pitcher actually inclined to support these two pitches in a repertoire? There's a variety of questions here that I think you have to answer, but I do also think that the Rays are kind of onto something. And generally we see the league being a pretty copycat league. When the sweeper kind of popped up a couple years ago, we're now starting to see other organizations in baseball in troves kind of give a lot of guys the sweeper. And I think this is just a subtle kind of addition to the sweepers just to adjust that other slider down such that you're now throwing two swing and miss weapons to generate swing and miss as a whole. And that's probably the goal at the end of the day. I understand pitching in contact and a variety of other things, if it makes sense for a pitcher, are pretty important. But on the whole, when you think about this combination, it allows you to generate swing and miss. And if we believe that whiffs are one of the most predictive things uh, going forward in baseball in terms of success, pitcher success, the most valuable thing you could have is a whiff, then it makes sense if other organizations have this kind of pitch pairing information and understand that these two pitches when thrown back to back on that second pitch will generate the highest probability of a swing and miss are just gonna lean into that and try to throw that as much as possible. We've seen the Rays be very analytically climb in this capacity, so I'm not surprised guys like Drew Rasmussen and Jeffrey Springs are doing this. Um, I just think we're gonna see it around the league more. It's a fun subtle variation to the topic of the sweeper, and I hope you enjoy this video.